When I write ya All across the USC, Compton, Watts Bay to LA From on to California From valley to valley We represent that killer county So if you keeping it real on your side of your town You tune in to Gangsta Chronicles Gangsta Chronicles We gon' tell you how it goes uh, If I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth Ooh. Gangsta Chronicles This is not your average show You're now tuned in to the real MCA, Big James, and Big Steel This is strictly from the streets Hello Because like you said, when you young, adrenaline pumping and everything, you got a popping ass record out, you think you're the shit. Oh, man. But it's somebody out there that will bring your ass back down to reality. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Not to get all your personal business, but how much paper was you making at that time? Um, I'm from the swap meets. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had 11 booths. Uh, 11 booths plus the store. They're each doing around 2,000 each, do the math. Uh, every month, I probably had like ninety thousand in cash. You know, just yeah, making some money. just just from the swap meets. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we got the deal. But my deal, let me tell you, my first deal was so bad. But we, our, our goal was to have our records in the warehouse records. Remember those days when mm -hmm. you couldn't wait to see your shit in a, in a big store. Mm -hmm. Like swap meets were cool, but we wanted to be. We wanted to walk. I'd go buy them myself. I'd go in there and. Buy my own shit, you know? Just, <laughs> just like if you're on a magazine, you want to buy your own magazine, you know? And um, we couldn't wait for that shit. So when I got my first deal, it was the worst deal in the world. But I took it because I wanted to be in the... I, I wasn't worried about money because I was going to make my money in the streets. You wanted to be in them channels. Yep. Yeah. So we got that deal. It was They gave me $2.50 a record. Plus, I, I had to press it. Damn. See, when you go $2.50 for an artist, that'd be good. But this was a label deal, and I had to pay for pressing, and all promotion. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's good? Hell no. No, no, that's no, terrible. That's terrible. That's horrible. I wasn't making that's it. Before. That's what I was trying to for tell being a la there. For being a label, no, that's, no, that's nothing. That's terrible. Because you're getting 250 a record, but then you got to go out, you got to promote the record, and you got to press and it I up. And I got to press it. So and you ain't, ain't making it. Not they're, they're letting them do everything, and then now they can come at you like we were saying in there. They, they, yeah, oh, but they get all us for promotion. No, we'll get to the next story. We'll, we'll get to the next story when it gets better. Mm -hmm. When it gets better is when you're making seven, seven ninety, yeah, seven ninety cents a record. Then you're making money. You're making money. Yeah. Because it's costing <laughs> you more to press it and promote yeah, it than it is what you're making. Pressing at the time was eighty five cents a CD. Was um, a, what was it like a dollar basically almost yeah, about almost a dollar? Was so you sell it as what? So they were selling. Dollars? No, no, they were only paying two fifty. They only giving you two fifty. That's it. They selling it for about ten something. And they're paying for nine thirty five. Yeah, so ten fifty nine nine thirty five. They giving you two fifty okay. out of that nine thirty five. It was a terrible deal. And they're not doing anything but putting it in the store. Yeah, you promoting it. Backwards. You put exactly. That's why it's a fucked up deal. Mm -hmm. It's backwards and motherfuckers. So you going through this deal right now. And but the I'm gonna tell you, tell you the greatest part of that deal. I'll tell you a good part of that deal. I there never been a Chicano rap label. There was Kid Frost, Light and Shade of Brown, who I worked with, and I worked with both of them. But when they had a deal, and 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 I don't mean to people get it, they think racist when I talk, when I say because I, I say black people, Mexican, but just because there's a difference. Yeah. And this, meaning when Frost got his deal and Light and Shaded Brown got their deal, those were considered black, we, we considered them black deals. Meaning the average deal in LA was 150,000, a, a, a sign act. So they got these deals, but Chicano rap is a, black rap sells like this, pow, and then stops. It, it trickles, but Chicano rap goes real slow, but it just seems to go forever. Right. It, it takes a long time to catch on. So when big labels put one hundred fifty thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, they ain't fucking with this Mexican shit no more, because this made their money so fast. You know what I'm saying? And this, they're like, man, we can't get our money back. So they start dropping. So those, that's why I had to make my own label because labels didn't want to put money on the Chicano orders no more because the money when they put out the Kid Frost, La Raza is worldwide. Everyone loves it as Mexicans, right? Right. But the world, white, if the black uh, fan didn't like it, the white and the oriental fan didn't buy it. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? So the Mexicans, we've we've changed a lot of that and been a lot of a lot of hard work. But so Kid Frost, you people think success. They see a guy we're talking about on videos, right? Mm-hmm. They, they live that success, but their pockets might be empty. Blowing them up. So everyone saw this this guy's biggest song and like, man, why aren't you guys on MTV like him? But we were actually making more money because we had the streets. We had, you know, he just had a, they owned that record. You know what right. I'm saying? Not him. So, um, so that that's what slowed down Chicano rap mm-hmm. because they gave the wrong amount of money to blow, you know, put money on radio. And you got to remember the the, ra- the radio fan at that time was black rap fan. Right. So someone saying raza came and a little bit of Spanish in it was something kind of new. So the average listener, we were excited as fuck. You know, when us Mexicans are, oh shit, that's the greatest, that's God, you know, that's, that's the greatest shit we ever heard in our ears. Right. But the average people didn't understand. But even, even, even in them days, the Mexicans was listening to more rap, black rap, than... Mexicans buy more black rap. rap than anyone in the world. Yeah. More than blacks or whites. So wasn't that like a... Am I right or wrong? <laughs> When you go to your crowds, I'll be how many Mexicans do you crowd every time you go? Depends on what city I'm in. Oh, you're right, you're right. Depends on the city I'm in. If it's a predominantly I mean LA, I sell records Diego, to I sell records to, to the SA homies. They love my music. Yeah. I've never had a problem with Mexicans with as far as my music is concerned. It depends on where you go. If yeah, if right. I do a concert in motherfucking San Antonio, it's gonna be a gang of Mexicans. As opposed to blacks. If I do a motherfucking show in motherfucking, you know, downtown L.A., or it's going to be half and half. Few niggas going to come. Few S.A. homies going to come. As opposed to if I go to motherfucking New Mexico and do a show. You get me? It's going to be predominantly S.A. homies. It, 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 yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like we, oh, we, definitely we, always. We support, always. We, we've always supported. It just didn't happen the other way all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? And we could get into, like, people go... Well, some of the Chicano rap is whack. They'll say that. Some people will say that. I'll say, yeah. And some of the black rap's whack. They're just because MC Hammer sucked, the Tupac say I ain't a black rapper? Because Mexicans have a problem there. Well, I, I skipped forward. A lot of Mexicans, they say, I'm not these new ones. Nah, I mean, I ain't Chicano rap. Well, well I'm that next level. Next level? Well, you're not black. You know, <laughs> like, like, what do you, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not Chicano rap. They, they try to say that. And it's yeah. like, well, when you sell seven million records, they go, they call it a box. I don't know if you guys seen the other part. They call it Chicano rap a box. Mm-hmm. The new, the new era is like, we don't want to be put in that box. And I'm like, well, homie, if you at least break the ceiling, get get your fans behind you, because if you go over here, if, if, meaning they're saying they're going to the black rap, you're in last place. If you're so much better than us, get in first place, then go over here, because you can't leave this people, our people. You can't if you leave without your support. It ain't gonna happen here. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta come through. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, going back, man. Now, when you had this new deal with BMC, did you still have Lil Rob? Which was he still a part? Yeah, of the I, I, and, and I end up getting uh, proper dose, Frank V. Mm-hmm. Um, I end up doing a, a oh, Russ. Put that out. Yeah. Okay. Not Mexican Power. Mm-hmm. He was signed to Scandalous. He had a big deal, a bigger deal. Again, like those numbers I told you, the first. The first Chicano rappers, he got a, a major deal. They were distributed to Disney, mm-hmm. and those numbers didn't yeah, come back. Was over there. It was over there with the homie High C. High C had a yeah. deal with Disney back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so those numbers didn't come back like they want to see. Mm-hmm. So I was able to sign them. And we hit up all the car shows. We were touring, me and Little Rob Prop, and Frank V. Proper Dose. We were touring every single car show, and we were selling like it was, it was going, man. Because we came in... We, we, we didn't come in like this and drop off. We came in, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. from the bottom, from the swap meet to where we, we went. And it seemed like, man, like, um, with the Mexican homies, so you know, I mess with a lot of the Mexican rappers, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I would hear songs with Lil Rob, not Lil Rob, but uh, Mr. Criminal and all, you know, all these guys, so I was, you know. And we don't look the same, homie. We're not the I same know. people. Come on. No, but you, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I mess with the homies, and I noticed they did a lot of cash business, and I always thought that was smart, because with them, it was the difference. You know, us as rappers, we want to sit up and just pop and go do the shows. Them dudes always had their CDs with them. They hit up all the swap meets, and today, had $4,500 in their pocket. You know what I'm saying? Had big money in their pocket. 
So you're doing this thing, you've got this distribution deal that's fucked up and everything, you don't sign this deal. How, how, soon did you, how long did you last over there before you said? Well, I did it whole three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ended up getting sued for natural high, 295000 <laughs> and that's what I But that was the, the greatest Worst day of my life All my swap me workers They all rapped a little bit And they, they And um, my, I went to my partner I, I sat in his office Just like this At BMG And I was going to pay I was going to pick up My big check We had a, We sold like um, uh, Like 60,000 records mm -hmm. I had a wrestling jam I put out the WWF. We had this rock band redo all their songs. Mm -hmm. And then I put out Proper Dose. I had a compilation. And I was going to pick up a check for like 140000 to pay everybody. Mm -hmm. And when I get up there, he's like, Royo, you didn't, this is uh, 99, so you really didn't check your email with it on your phone. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it was in, and I'm very slow with that. So he's like, Royo, why are you here? I'm saying, I'm here to pick up my check, homie. He's like, you didn't look at your email. We've been sued, blah, 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 blah. You owe us. I'm like, the fuck? Wow. So I sat in that office from two in the afternoon to two in the morning till that motherfucker gave me money to pay my artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he wasn't leaving and I wasn't leaving. Mm -hmm. So we got the money. I went and paid all these guys. And this is where me and Little Rob's problem began. When I, people go, oh, Roy ripped off Little Rob. Well, he tried to, tried to do any before he got a lawyer. He, I gave him, my mom taught me one thing. She always said, when you ever do a check and give someone a check, or you're going to give them cash, make them sign a check, you know, sign it. So I gave him a check. He goes, oh, no, I want cash. So I, I gave him cash, had him sign the check. Then he went and said, I never paid him. I paid him 18000 in his living room. Bam. He said, I never paid him. So I went, I went and uh, got the check. You know, when they, when they, they took me to a little, got a little lawyer and stuff. I said, well, isn't that your signature? Yeah. You know, and a couple other checks and a couple other things. So that's how we kept, that's how that ended. But that's a whole, that's a whole nother yeah. forward thing. But from that deal, BMG deal, I ended up getting a universal deal. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that got a lot better. And then my greatest deal was with EMI. So let me ask you this now, with Universal, did they call you up one day like, Royal, we like how you moving and everything? Did yeah. You? I mean, at that time, um, I was the first independent Chicano rap, or, I, had, I had buildings. Yeah, we had you studio. You like Master P yeah. the Chicano rap well, I, I, I like to say Master P copied me, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, he was running on the Bay, I was through the Bay everywhere. I mean, I, I know it's a, it's a hard thing, but I didn't follow no one. I just was a, like when you looked at my, my paper earlier, right? Mm -hmm. All my CDs, the reason I, if you ever listen to the end of any of my CDs, my last other thing in the back of it, you'll see a, I always had a commercial, just like a podcast. Mm -hmm. I did LPG radio show for 15 years because I knew this, my promotion was my mouth. And I knew that if you're gonna listen to my record, you might not see my poster because it was hard getting posters in every record store. So I think they say I had 12 tracks, the 13th track would be a commercial. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh man, get ready for the new little rap, the new. I'd put all these records. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not even came out. But I just had, if I had 20 homies in there and we had 20 records we were going to do that we said we were going to do before we get in fights or whatever, mm -hmm. I would promote all those records. Part three is going to come out of this. Part My instrumental album would do all this shit. And then in each of my album covers, this is a small one. This is old one, but we would have like all the catalog you could order from the back. I had a mail order shit. And then we had posters, we had t-shirt company. I mean, this is, every single album had this shit. I don't even see the back of this. Yeah, yeah. So you got where a motherfucker, this old school shit right here, but yeah. it's great, so you got where they could order the t-shirts and shit you advertise in the next yeah. album. You got the post, you still have fan, club. Yeah. fan club. Yeah. Fan club. Yeah. This we had the office. On it. Yeah. This look familiar to the motherfucker. I mean, that's what we were, Plus, we were the first one in 1996. I couldn't even, like I told I had to hire people to come. I opened the first chat room on my website mm -hmm. and I let it where no one could, uh, Let me see that. you couldn't block, you'd have to block no one for saying fuck you. You know, back then they used to, you type fuck or mm -hmm. um, punk or whatever. My thing, so we used to have like 350,000 people a week using it. They didn't even know who we were. They just were happy to be able to use a mm -hmm. open chat room. Because mm -hmm. some people would be like, hey, what's up, homie? 
Shout out to you know, low profile. Re- oh, what's that? You're on our shit, motherfucker. But they were using the chat room because there was no cell phones. Cell phones were here, mm-hmm. but there was no text. Mm-hmm. So people from Spain would be hitting people from America using that to talk to each other mm-hmm. in the chat room. That was some big shit. The chat room was yeah. the biggest mm-hmm. it used to be cracking. Yeah, so we were known. It used to be cracking. So, man, you got this whole empire that you're building, right? Mm-hmm. How many artists did you have at the time? Probably about 15. At the time. And you had Night Owl and stuff and all. Uh, I was distributing Night Owl's label mm-hmm. and, and Mr. Little One's label, mm-hmm. Sicko Records. And I had um, three other labels I, I distributed their stuff also. Mm-hmm. And those are some pretty big artists. They like come um, like in the Chicano rap world, Little One and all of them. Like oh, yeah. Shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, in fact, Little One starts his podcast this weekend. Night Owl's opening a label in Mexico City right now. Him and Shadow. So they, you know, we, we talk every... Every week. <laughs> hey.